Pay very close attention to the words you're about to hear. Something is wrong with your reality. Big government, big business, the mainstream media, and orthodox science all tell you what to believe. Yet the holes in their stories only get bigger every day. Welcome to your wake-up call. Welcome to your red pill. Welcome to Mental Self-Defense Radio and the Jake Shannon Radio Program. Now, here's your host. Jake Shannon. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to Mental Self Defense Radio. I'm your host, Jake Shannon. This is where Utah gets its daily dose of liberty and logic. You can think of us as uh, as the Second Amendment for your mind. This is the show that fights to close that gap between rhetoric and and reality. Now, follow my instructions closely. Write down our call-in numbers. You are going to need them. 801-254-5855 in Salt Lake County. 801-470-5855 in Utah County. And Weber and North Davis. 801-670-5855. And just as Thomas Jefferson before me, I have sworn an eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the minds of men. While I may not agree with what you say when you call in, I will always fight for your right to say it. Today, I thought I'd change it up. I'm sick of this uh, weekend at Bernie's uh, wag the dog farce uh, Osama bin Laden business. So I thought I'd change it up today. And today, I'm asking the question. We're, I kind of am, am getting in touch with more of my my holistic roots or whatever, I don't know what you want to call it, but I'm, I've recently learned something. You know, I had one opinion, then I learned some, and now I have a different opinion based on my own personal experience. And that experience was the birth of my second child. I have two kids, for those of you who care about these things. I have a little daughter, and I have now a son who's mm, about a year and a half old. Anyway, my first child, my daughter, was born uh, in a hospital, in a very fancy hospital. As a matter of fact, I think uh, Tom Cruise, uh, Britney Spears, I can't remember exactly who, but I know for sure Tom Cruise had his kid there. Um, you know, should have been awesome, and it wasn't. <laughs> uh, but I didn't know how lame it was until with my second child we made the decision my wife and I ha- uh, stumbled upon this documentary by Ricky Lake who again I was never a fan of her of her show but this documentary she she produced a documentary called The Business of Being Born I would highly recommend it to anyone and especially if you know somebody who uh, is pregnant and planning on giving birth it is an incredible documentary it changed our mind and we decided to go uh, and do a natural childbirth for our second child. And as such, I really learned a lot. I learned a lot more with my second child uh, about the birth process than I did with my first. And so today, we're kind of having a, a little baby show. Okay? But bear with me. It is definitely going to be polarizing. Not polarizing because of the guest that I actually have in studio. The, the guest in studio today is Becky McInnes. She is a midwife. She actually delivered my son, and uh, I was. Uh, we're very fortunate that we were able to to pull her away from her passion, and that is uh, helping women give birth to to babies naturally. Um, and she's here in studio. So, uh, welcome to the show, Becky. I'm very glad that you could come in. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, now, just cozy up to that mic just a little bit. Um, so, how long have you been doing this? I've been midwifing for 21 years. 21 years. So it, a rough guess. I mean, I'm not expecting you to have these kind of statistics at hand. How many babies have you brought into this into this world? You know, I get asked that a lot. And I tell you, I do about 50 babies a year. So it's a pretty small number uh, uh, for us, uh, between 50 and 100, uh, which is, it, it's a pretty small number. For yeah, but at 20, 20 years, that that's a lot of babies. <laughs> that's a lot of babies. Okay. And, and again, you know... I don't begrudge people uh, doing a hospital birth because they didn't know, but it's it, it does seem hard when they actually are aware of the differences 
to justify somebody doing it. And I'm not, I, I'll am not. i be the bad guy here. I know that you, you are the sweetest, kindest person, so I won't expect you to stick your neck out. But I'm just saying, go rent that DVD. It's so powerful. Um, so let's say that we have some listeners. Maybe... Uh, they're pregnant. Their wife is pregnant. Their their uh, their son or daughter are they're expecting a child. What would be the best way to uh, to get a hold of you? I know you're on Facebook, but what what is like your website? Well, our website is utahbirthcenter.com, and we have monthly educational programs where people can come and and watch these kind of videos, like the business of being born. We have several of them. And we recommend that people come and learn as much as they can. Uh, my basic comment to people is if you don't know what your options are, you don't have any. We really honor women in choosing whatever it is that they desire. But if you don't know what your options are, then how do you know that what you've chosen is what's going to be best for you? Yeah, you know, that video, uh, again, I'm not as as informed as you, obviously, because this is, is your uh, life's calling and you've been doing it for 20 years. But it was shocking to me to learn the statistics like how, how like <clears throat> like uh c-sections well it is uh really shocking most of the time we believe we spend more money at uh in our health care than any other nation in the world by far uh, particularly in our birthing process so you would think that we'd have the best statistics but we actually have some of the poorest our cesarean section rate runs 35 percent right now uh, and the World Health Organization has made it very clear that no country should ever be have a cesarean section rate over 15%, that if they do, that they're actually damaging mothers and babies by that uh, cesarean section rate. And our babies are dying at a faster rate than any other industrialized nation. Our, um, we're actually 40th in the world. Uh, many third world countries have better uh, infant mortality rates than we do, which is it's really sad. And then I think the correlation there is that those third world countries countries tend towards natural childbirth, not towards these surgical type of approach to surgery. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. Yeah, it really is. It's kind of like a, um, it's like an open secret or something. I mean, it's, if you look for it, if you know, like you said, if you're informed and you actually know what to look for, you can kind of learn, but it's, it's getting over that block. What is, what's the objection? You know, obviously there's, you, you meet new parents all the time. What is kind of the common objection that, that you encounter the most when somebody comes in are, are they, that, that they are afraid of? Is it the pain typically or? Well, I think that those people who actually make it in the door, the pain is a big issue because when, like right now in the state of Utah, our epidural rate runs about 95%. Very few women know what it feels like to birth without medication. And so not knowing what it feels like, they think it must be really horrible, unbearable. Uh, however, most people who aren't coming in the door really believe that birthing outside of a hospital is inherently dangerous and that you're endangering your baby and generally that you don't care enough about your baby to give them safe care, which is absolutely untrue. Statistics are very clear. The American uh, Public Health Association themselves says that uh, in order to improve health of mothers and babies in our nation, that we need to have more births with midwives outside of the hospital, an amazing thing. Thing for them to state. Well, and it's funny too because you know uh, historically, this whole method of having a woman lay flat on her back and having it be a surgeon uh, attending the woman—that's new. I mean, if we go back thousands of years of people being born, I mean, that's how we're all here and how we all got here, and our parents, our grandparents, our great it was natural. I mean, why is this being medicalized when it has nothing to do with it? You don't. Unless there's a rare, rare occurrence, and like my son, he was born with the knot in the umbilical cord, and yet he still was able to come out through a natural birth. Uh, that's typically considered crazy risky or something, but our son was totally fine, came out safe, and even in the in the occurrence that something were to happen, you can send women to a hospital right away or what? I mean, isn't that right? That's absolutely true. Uh, we carry medications, all the medications for a mom if she would bleed, uh, would have a problem bleeding, uh, baby complete resuscitation equipment, uh, medication to be able to assist the baby in, in being able to be started. Although those things are rare, we have them, uh, and the capabilities of being able to take care of moms and babies in those emergency situations and transferring if that's the case. And the fact is, our statistics are 
excellent. Absolutely excellent. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing where it just certainly seems like it's a battle of education in terms of, I mean, it's like almost self-evident. It's just you don't know that it's actually on the menu. It's like people don't know to flip the menu over, and there's this whole other set of options uh, that are there, and it's safer, it's proven, it's been going on for thousands of years. Man, because it, it's, I, it's a little disappointing it, because it shows me how much influence, you know, obviously large hospitals, because they make a lot of money. I remember my first baby, now we had, uh, I was working in corporate America, I had crazy insurance, but we looked at the bill, it was like $30,000 or something ridiculous, and we were not happy with the way the birth went. And then we went to you, and typically, I mean, I'm not asking for a... a, a a specific number necessary because I'm sure it's on a case by case basis, but it's a fraction of that, right? To come and have a natural birth, most definitely, uh, quite a bit less than a traditional hospital birth, which in the state of Utah runs between ten and fifteen thousand dollars. Quite a bit less than that, significantly less. Yeah, I mean, uh, for us, it was like more than half, like a. Th- I mean, it was really affordable, which is the other funny thing because everybody in this economy, I mean, why not do something that is. Uh, not only safer, duh, if you care, you know, really care and you now know about these, these facts, but also cheaper. I mean, it's like a no brainer. It's kind of funny because I think that we as a people believe that if we spend more money at something, we're going to get higher quality. Uh, we're going to have safer babies if we spend more money and we use more technology because we trust technology. But in a lot of things in our lives, this is natural. Our body does it. And when we mess with it, we actually mess it up. Yeah, it actually it invites a lot more problems. And then you're paying more for it. It's like a Jaguar. Why? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm Jaguar, Jaguar the car, of course. Uh, you know, I, I was just handed this note. To all you guys, I see the phones already lighting up. Please, please be patient. Our, our our phone lines, I guess, are actually down. I see the guys in there working on it right now. We're working hard. So please be patient. Uh, the other thing that I haven't uh, revealed yet is that not only do we have this great guest with, with Becky, this expert who's uh, day-to-day in the trenches doing this for 20 years, uh, in addition... We're also talking today with Georgianne Chapin. And again, the phones are down. She will be with us shortly. Now, Georgianne Chapin is with Intact America. Okay? Intact America, for those of you that don't know, is, um, it's basically an advocacy group that is trying to get people. It's, I think it's the, the biggest group out there. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, if not, they're at the top. I mean, they're huge. They're really doing great things and making a difference. And George Ann is the uh, she's the founding executive director. Now, what they're actually doing is they're trying to wake people up. And I, okay, they're kind of this is kind of related, not related, but I it's related to my brain because Becky, this wonderful, brilliant midwife, uh, delivered my son, and because it was a son, I had to do a little research on the topic. Yes, I'm going to say it of circumcision. And so the question I have for you today, and I know I'm teasing you because the phone lines are down, but is it a crime? I think it's a, it's a, it's a legit issue. And, and again, I'm a little agnostic. I have my own particular view, you know, but I'm open. And so I thought I'd bring some people in here to have different perspectives and maybe share statistics and facts that you may not have been aware of that might change your opinion about things. Now, again, George Ann Chapin. Executive Director of uh, Intact America. She will be with us shortly, uh, but we got to get these phone lines up and fixed. So, so please be patient. Uh, bear with us. We're going to bring her on as soon as possible. Uh, so, on that topic, though, that's one of the things I really like about uh, about your your place. You teach people about both sides of, of the argument, right? Right. Well, and of well, and I hate to cut you off, but we got a break coming up. I can't control the brakes. Come on back. We're, we're talking about natural childbirth and circumcision. Is it a crime? K-Talk, Voice of Utah. AM 630, K-Talk. Utah's oldest, most trusted talk station. Let's be real. Smoking sucks. It's a nasty, expensive, unattractive, and thoroughly unhealthy habit. There's the acrid smell in your clothes and on your breath. Yuck. Not to mention the increased health risk that cigarette smoke presents to those nearest and dearest to you. 
Call Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis now for your free consultation to learn how you can quit today. 801-738-5390. That's Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis, 801-738-5390. Tune in each weekday afternoon at 4 for Drive Time Live, the Mills Crenshaw Show, brought to you by eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Mills. Your source for delicious, savory meals that last up to 30 years and only need water to prepare. eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Mills. Doug, it's our song. You need to buy your windows from Window World. A happy customers all agree. It's no baloney, folks. Window World's done it again. Hi, this is Doug. And Kathy from Window World. For the third year in a row, Window World's been named number one in America. Wow. From mom and pop to number one. That's right, and we still treat you like family. Fairly and honestly. Oh, Window World today. 281-8111. 281-8111. Window World. Simply the best for less. And we promise no baloney. The Voice of Utah, AM 630 K-Talk. K-Talk.com. Number one for the most live, local, two-way talk. Ricky, don't lose that number. You don't want to call nobody else. Mental Self-Defense Radio, we're back. I'm your host, Jake Shannon. I am uh, very lucky today to have in studio with us Becky McInnes from the Utah Burr Center. Uh... Again, a very special woman to me. She uh, 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 helped to deliver my son, um, and uh, it was a gr- it was really a profound experience. My wife, she is like all about this. I mean, you, she did both. She did a hospital birth and a uh, a natural childbirth at the Utah Birth Center, and uh, man. Don't get her started talking about it, okay? Because she will con- she will convert you over too. Because it was an incredible uh, difference for us. We really noticed the difference between uh, a hospital birth and it was supposedly one of the best hospitals in the United States, and uh, and and going to uh, and and working with a midway a midwife like Becky, it was it was really amazing um, for us. And we're lucky to have her here because I mean she's delivering babies left and right. She I, she's a very busy woman. Um, She's really an amazing woman. Tell us how did you how did you get into it? I mean, what was you weren't? I mean, obviously you weren't born a midwife. What, what there was one day where you were, and one day where all of a sudden you're like, this is this is it. What happened? Well, and I think pretty common for midwives. Uh, what happened is I had a baby, and did not have the experience that I expected. Uh, was very disappointed with my experience and thought this is really. You know, not what I wanted. Certainly, I can have something better than this and still have it be safe. Got involved in the childbirth experience uh, as a childbirth educator, doula, and uh, decided that this was something that I could do, help women to be able to have this experience, help families to be able to be bonded, and most importantly, to be able to let people know that they have options, choices, to be able to make the choices that are best for them in this really important time of their life. Yeah, it's... Uh it really is one of those things where you go through it and then you're like, whoa, oh my goodness. And it's it's crazy to me because we went and, again, did this incredibly expensive, expensive um, um, hospital birth and we learned nothing. I mean, I know personally that the doctor came in off the golf course just to catch the baby and then left again. And, like, we didn't know anything. And then we came, uh, we did the uh, the Bradley... Uh, childbirth course and then all the courses that you guys teach there in addition man I felt like I knew a thing or two after the experience and it was really great because even as as a dad we're usually you know the the uh, the cliches you know you're out in the waiting room with the, uh, handing out cigars or whatever and this was totally different I mean not to get too graphic but I I mean I was right there during the whole thing and it I mean you know literally getting my hands dirty it was awesome I felt like a part of things. It was, it was really great. What's the biggest change in the men, in the husbands or the fathers that, that that you notice when you you know they come in and maybe they're a little like, what is this this hippie stuff, you know? And then by the end of it, they're done. What's what's the biggest change that you notice? 
Actually, our last birth was exactly like that. He walked in, he said, I just expected to find some hippie midwives barefoot and, you know, are wearing their Birkenstocks and this is all just really weird and I want to make sure my wife and my baby are safe. Uh, he now posts on our Facebook and says it was the most incredible experience of his life, baby born into his hands, uh, because this is a family experience and he feels now so bonded to his wife and his baby much more powerfully than you, than as a father. Uh, or as a partner has an opportunity to in a hospital where they're kind of pushed off to the side, say, this is a medical experience. We need to save your family, and you just stay out of the way. There's really no point for you to be here. And yet, this is the birth of your family and can be an incredible experience for uh, a family, a, a couple to experience together. Yeah, I mean, I agree wholeheartedly. I, I would just so recommend, at least even if, you know, just... Okay, so we already dropped a, a DVD. What, what's maybe a good book if people aren't, uh, you know, they're not into watching DVDs or TV? What would you say is maybe a recommended book? I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, but just something that might help people wake up uh, to it. Anything? You know, nothing comes right to mind at first. You can have an entire library of just birth books, the experiences that women have. Uh, there's lots of organizations out there. There's the, you, the the I Can organization that talks about vaginal birth after cesarean because our cesarean section rate is so high. Uh, there are uh, there's all these different options like Free Birth, uh, which is an organization for women who want to birth without anyone being there. Uh, going into those organizations and finding those kind of things and seeing um, what it is that that is going to fit for you. Uh, lots of books written by midwives, uh, lots of books written by mothers. I wouldn't recommend one over another. I really think that moms need to be able to find what it is that's going to fit them right. And some people are looking for, how am I going to have the birth that I want in hospital? Some people are saying, I don't want anybody there at all. Uh, the more information that you get, the better you're able to make the choice that fits right for you. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating stuff. For those of you who are just tuning in, uh, we're here. I'm, I'm again stoked. We've got Becky McInnes. She's with the Utah Birth Center, and the website is utahbirthcenter.com. All one word. Correct. Okay, great. And uh, and you know, look, this is political talk radio, so I got to ask the question. I mean, this is a political thing. I mean, there is legislation and people kind of you know lobbyists with money from corporations that aren't into this kind of kind of thing, right? I that's, mean, that's an absolute. Uh, we've spent about four years working with the health department trying to change the laws or the regulations surrounding birth centers. Um, if I can say this on the radio, um, as long as it's not your first word, go ahead. <laughs> our uh, uh, when we really came to a stalemate was when we were. You know, in a meeting with health department and one of the uh, spokesmen, a lawyer for the um, Utah Hospital Association said, we cannot let these changes occur because if they do, we will lose a lot of money. I was just blown away that they would yeah, say that on public the, record. They don't care the, the statistics saying that it's safer, that it saves people money, that it's about not us, the citizens, it's about these corporations. It really surprised me because I thought that if that was really the case, they wouldn't be so bold as to say that right out loud on on public on public it was, record. It was the public record, huh? Absolutely. Wow. So it, it was surprising to me, but very clear. Uh, there is a lot of money. Our hospitals in the United States uh, get the majority of their money from childbirth-related uh, admissions. That's where they get their money. And so to say that there's something else out there really, you know, puts a bee in their bonnet. Yeah, yeah, especially when you're delivering a safer service at a lower price. Uh, yeah, it's certainly, uh, yeah, boy, I, I feel for you, and that's why I want to have you on the show, because I think people need to understand the dynamic of the whole deal, not only why it's so great, but even the, the challenges that you face. Um, we were lucky, too, because we were really considering it, and our, uh, our offices were right across the hall, from your old offices, where where are you located now? What what is the general area? Or you, if you want to give the address, that's fine. Uh, yeah, we're we're in Murray, so it's it's uh, kind of central. We're just on Ninth East at fifty one oh seven South, and you know it it makes it pretty easy for people to get to regardless of where they are. But it's just a small facility. The whole idea is that we have a limited number that we do. It's a small home like facility, and we only do a certain number. 
and it's not cookie cutter. I mean, that's the thing with the hospital. It's like you got to fit into their cookie cutter. Whereas when we went with you, you're like, oh, you can have this room. You can do have a have a bath. You can. There's all kinds of different options. I mean, it was really. I can't. I just honestly can't see why anybody, <laughs> if they know about this, why they wouldn't do that. You know, why why they wouldn't see you. Do you ever get that? I mean, is it is it because they're just so old fashioned, or s- they work in the medical profession maybe, and they, they, there is this kind of economic uh, incentive to to kind of. I, what do you find is is the biggest kind of hurdle to getting people to just wake up to this? Well, I think the biggest hurdle is that they just can't believe it. They cannot believe that truly you can pay less and get a better service. That just doesn't make sense. That you'd use less technology and actually be safer. It doesn't make sense. And so that's the biggest hurdle that we have for people. And I say if you just look into it, the medical statistics themselves in the uh, American Association, Obstetricians and Gynecologists journals, they're very clear. The statistics are in favor of -of out-of-hospital birth with midwives for low-risk moms and babies. It's it's very clear. The American Medical Association uh, understands that. The American Public Health Association promotes that and has made statements uh, specifically saying that's the way we're going to be healthier. And it's hard for us to wrap our minds around something that huge, that, you know, when we look at our world, that doesn't seem to fit into our view of world. And that's our biggest hurdle that we tend to have to jump over. That, that They're like, oh, this is just too good to be true. And then they just forget about it. Right. Yeah, Absolutely. That, and the thing is, is like I was saying before the break, what's great is that you you guys are so cool. Like you don't push anything on us. There's none of that. It's you're you're really facilitating. You're, I mean, obviously you push safety and you push um, you know, doing it naturally and being encouraging and empowering uh mothers to give birth this way, but like you know, you you show people, you educate people about everything and then let them decide. And I love that. Like, so again, that's part of the purpose of the show to wake people up to the fact that you're there and that you, there is this option for people. But also with regards to George Ann Chapin, once we do get these phones working, uh, about circumcision. You know what? Maybe this is something that you do need to very seriously think about. Maybe this is, you know, turn off the entertainment tonight. Don't surf Facebook. Sit down for a second and actually learn a thing or two, right? Like, educate yourself because this is your child. What if you're making a flip decision and it's a really wrong, bad, dangerous decision? I mean, how can people just take things so lightly? Now, I remember taking the classes and you guys would, you had, you had things on why to, you know, why somebody would want to get circumcised, why they wouldn't get want to get circumcised. There's no particular religious affiliation. You take anybody from a from a uh, from the LDS church to a Muslim to a agnostic, right? I mean, there's no it's anybody can come. Absolutely. We have people from all walks of life that come because women give birth to babies. And when you start a family, it opens a whole host of questions. People will say, well, when do I have to, when, when do I get to that point where I've made my decisions and I'm, I'm good? I said, well, I, I'm afraid that happens when you die because you'll have decisions to make now about this child even on up and through when they're an adult. And, and one of those decisions that comes first is, is circumcision. And it's a huge, it's a huge question for people. Uh, vaccinations, a huge question for people. And what we try to do is educate because if we empower people to be able to find their own information and make their own decisions, then they're going to make the decisions that are right for them. I could never make the decision that's right for you. I just give you information so you can make that decision. Yeah, it really is great. And I, because I remember there was people in our, it, 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 explain to the listeners, you have, so when, when, when we sign up to have you be our midwife, and we go to the Utah Birth Center. There's actually like classes, right? I mean, it's what is it like every week? Or I I, had, I know it was a year and a half ago, but my memory is awful. So is it, it was like a weekly class that we did, right? 
Well, there there are different classes that we offer there, but I think what you're talking about is what we call our prenatal groups, or uh, nationally it's known as the Centering Pregnancy Program, Okay. where women come for their regular visits, which is monthly in the beginning, and then becomes more often as their visits would become more often, and they get to meet with other people, other mothers, other partners, other yeah, families. Yeah, what was cool is there was a group of us, and to, to be honest, we're all st- most of us are all still friends today. We all go do stuff together and things like that. I'm sure you find that almost in every group. Yes, it's wonderful. You need that kind of support, and that way people find that kind of support. Yeah, you know, because now I'm thinking about this, like, we all watch each other's kids, and, you know, so maybe me and my wife can go get a date, and, you know, they want to go have a date, and they drop off their baby. It's really community building as well. It's really wonderful. Right, and and what better kind of community can we build? And when we take people who are from different backgrounds, different lifestyles, and teach them that they have something in common, and they learn to support and, and appreciate the each other and the differences and the things that they have alike as well, that makes our world a better place. Yeah, it really is amazing. Now, for those of you just tuning in, we're talking with Becky McInnes, who is... Now, Becky, not only is a midwife, but she she helped my wife deliver our son. So she's very special to me. But not I'm not having her here because I'm biased. I'm having her here because I our daughter we had at a hospital birth, and then my son... We had in a uh, in a natural childbirth setting with with Becky at the Utah Birth Center, and it it really is mind blowing. And I wish you guys could call in. I'm very sorry that the uh, I know that the phone lines are blown up, but uh, yeah, my my uh, my producer is crying on the other side of the glass here. Um, we wish you guys could call in as soon as the phones are fixed. I will let you know because I kn- I can just see the boards lighting up here, uh, wanting to talk about this and probably share your experiences. Um, now, I'm gonna because Georgianne, uh, we you know we're trying to get her on, but obviously because our phones are down, we can't get her in. I wanted to talk a little bit about circumcision, and again, this is such a polarizing issue. It's one of those things that you don't realize it's polarizing until you actually talk about it. Um, in your experience, again, you see couples all the time for decades. What, in your experience, is the primary reason why couples would choose to circumcise a little boy? Is it religious? Is it that daddy was that way? I mean, is it as simple as that, or is there more, uh, and pardon my bias here, but more logical reasons than that, I hope? Well, um, I think that with circumcision, just as with any kind of medical procedure that's very common to us, we believe that if it's something that's done commonly, it's something that's necessary. That if we do not do this, this invasive medical surgery on these newborn baby boys, that they are going to be unhealthy and look forward to a life uh, of infections and possibly dying of AIDS or whatever, when in fact the studies are, are completely the opposite of that. Uh, you know, babies, this does not make babies any healthier. This is strictly a procedure at the same as piercing a little girl's yeah, ears. It's like cosmetic surgery. Absolutely. Uh, and, and this is, I think, the hardest hurdle because... <clears throat> These are the arguments I hear. I was that way because obviously I'm a guy. I talk to guys about it. I was that way. My dad was that way. My son will be that way. But, you know, it really comes down to – and the funny thing to me is this. is usually the people that are the hardest core about this are the same people that are hardcore about being pro-life. And they're pro-life because they think a baby's rights begin at conception – but then somehow those rights magically go away when it comes to strapping them to a board and surgically removing like a piece of skin that is maybe I would argue the most sensitive and nerve laden <laughs> area of the body. Uh, it just it seems so incongruent, but somehow they're able to maintain that contradiction. Um, the other thing I hear is that oh well you know I don't want him to look like a freak, but I think the statistics are 
quite the opposite, isn't it? The majority now that are actually uncircumcised? I I think I read that somewhere. I don't know if I'm right or wrong. It's actually higher in, circumcision is higher in Utah than in most other states. In most other states, circumcision is definitely less common. Uh, but even in Utah, we're looking at a very high percentage of uncircumcised boys. There's going to be both in any locker room in, in the nation. And no one's going to look at anybody differently. And when I hear your story, I'd like to kind of tell a little story of my own. Yeah, come on back after the break. I I promise you we're working on those phones. We're talking about natural childbirth and circumcision. Is it a crime? Come on back. AM 630 K-Talk Where patriots come to cheer and progressives run in fear. 63% of Americans are overweight. If you've decided it's time to leave your flat behind, HipFit Weight Loss is for you. HipFit changes habits. Lose the bad habits, lose the weight. HipFit is guaranteed to make your weight loss successful and has absolutely no health risks. HipFit students are not required to count calories, weigh portions, or buy specialty food. Start losing weight immediately. Call 801-635-4488. HipFit is conveniently located at Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis. Ask about our guaranteed to stop smoking program 801-635-4488 thursday may 5th at seven o'clock you can learn the truth about 2012 at the water wellness center 3727 south 900 east in salt lake city join us for a special event 2012 activation understanding the ninth wave of the mayan calendar and the shift of ages The ninth wave has already begun. Back on March 9th, 2011, the ninth wave manifested the earthquakes and nuclear crisis in Japan. The ninth wave also ignited revolutions in 12 different Arabic nations in the Middle East. The ninth wave of the Mayan calendar of creation is intended to evolve the consciousness for the birth of a new humanity on December 21st, 2012. Now you can be part of this history-making event. Meet documentary filmmakers and Mayan calendar experts at the Water Wellness Center Thursday, May 5th for this powerful experience. Tickets are just $10 and includes a free two-hour DVD. For more information, go to k-talk.com and click on the Water Wellness link or stop by the Water Wellness Center, 3727 South, 900 East in Salt Lake City. Tune in each weekday afternoon at 4 for Drive Time Live, the Mills Crenshaw Show, brought to you by eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Mills. Delicious gourmet meals that are quick and easy to prepare. Call for your free sample. eFoodsDirect.com forward slash mills. At Acme Heating and Air, we save you time and money. The state of Utah has an energy audit program that will pay you hundreds or thousands to have new energy efficient equipment, windows, insulation, and more installed in your home. But funds are limited. So act now by calling Acme Heating and Air at 801-467-1050. With over 25 years of heating and air experience at Acme, we work extra hard to earn your trust and confidence. Plus, we pledge only drug-free employees with complete and comprehensive background checks. Right now, Acme has up to $2,000 in rebates for new furnaces and a brand new springtime AC special. Acme will chemically clean your outside AC unit and pressure check all lines and system components for just $78. Imagine that, just $78 to make sure your home and family are cool and comfy this summer. Call Acme Heating and Air today at 801-467-1050 for upfront pricing with no surprises. At Acme, if you're uncomfortable, so are we. Call today, 801-467-1050. That's 801-467-1050. The Voice of Utah. AM 630 K-Talk. K-Talk.com. Number one for the most live local two-way talk. Welcome back Mental Self-Defense Radio. I'm your host, Jake Shannon. Today we are talking about natural childbirth, and the subject of circumcision. Circumcision, is it a crime? And the good news is, our phones are working, and we're, get, we're going to be able to get... To, well, they're sort of working. My, my producer wants to wanted me to tell you... Well, she just said it's not her fault. But we only have one line to call in, so if the line is busy, please be patient... And, you know, obviously listen for when the caller hangs up and, and, and call then. <laughs> I want to hear from you. Is, what is your opinion? Is circumcision a crime? I think so. 
But what do you think? And I want to hear a good argument. I don't want to hear... I mean, I don't know. Even if you don't have a good argument, I will be polite to you, I promise. Uh, but I'm super stoked. One, we've got Superwoman, Becky McInnes, uh, midwife, uh, runs the Utah Birth Center, utahbirthcenter.com. Uh, she is joining me here and has been uh, sharing her experiences, uh, the how political natural childbirth is here in Utah, uh, the facts, the statistics about how safe it is, how affordable it is, and some of the trials, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and tribulations that she's had to go through to try to keep this service available for people who do want it. Um, additionally, I'm thrilled. We've been working to get her for, for, oh, I don't know, a little while. My wife was really the one who was like, oh, my gosh, you have to get her. And uh, Georgianne Chapin, she is uh, quite an amazing woman. Uh, you know, I thought I put my neck out there. Uh, <laughs> this woman is tough. But I think she, if I was reading her bio, she's got a JD degree, a degree so she's, she can handle herself. Georgianne Chapin, uh, she's the founding executive director of Intact America. You can go to intact, I-N-T-A-C-T, America, dot, I believe it's org. Uh, let me bring her on without further ado. Georgianne, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, Jake. Oh my what, goodness! How nice that you got your phone lines up. I'm thrilled. <laughs> I know you'd think you'd think we were in uh, the 1950s or something. Right, but I've been listening, and the program's great, great, great so far. You've got yourself a wonderful guest. So oh, I, I yeah, I want to make the terrific. introduction. This is uh, Becky McInnes. Becky, Hi, this Becky. is Georgianne. You know, I, I'm Hi, just Georgianne. thrilled you're. I'm thrilled you're here. Uh, man, you've got to be a lightning rod because there's very few issues that I find uh, that are so surprisingly polarizing as this. Yeah, isn't it weird? It's, it's so weird that we think it's just fine to like cut off part of a little baby boy's penis when he's born, but we don't want to talk about it. You know, yeah, I, can't talk about it. Oh, that's just terribly controversial. Don't talk the, about it. And the justifications are so weird. I mean, everybody. Yeah. I mean, man, we'd have pitchforks and the whole you know Frankenstein scene of the villagers if if we were doing this to little girls yeah but I mean okay here's the deal Georgian I am not a hippie okay Becky might be a hippie I am not speaking for her but <laughs> I'm not a hippie at all I really am not at all zero I I mean I like them they're nice they're fun to hang out with and stuff but let me ask you just a question I'm gonna get a little metaphysical here for you okay is it sure. so crazy to believe that our world might be a better place if those individuals in our culture, in our society, the ones with the most testosterone when they turn into grown men, their very first experience in this world wasn't probably the most painful thing that I could imagine having done. Wouldn't this world maybe be better? I mean, is that crazy of me to think? I don't see how you could argue the opposite, you know, that the world is better for having... Um, conducted this very painful assault on the genitals of of baby boys. I I think there are plenty of mean, nasty people who are intact, which is what we call you know uncircumcised. We call them intact, just just like a, a woman who has both breasts. We don't call her unmastectomized, right? We just yeah, just or, normal or, um, or unibreast so, or something weird, right? Right. So we we. I mean, you cannot, so let, you know, I don't think circumcision is the root of all evil, but I think that, that the fact that we do this to baby boys, and don't forget, somebody does it, right? The doctors who do this are engaged in this terribly assaultive and painful, um, <laughs> useless procedure. They're the ones that tie the child down and cover their ears so that either literally or figuratively so that they don't have to hear that baby screaming and they're the ones that know that it is a totally unnecessary thing that they are doing so it is a dehumanizing violent act for the circumciser and a dehumanizing um, act for the victims which are the Babies who have just come into this world and have, you know, should have the expectation of being protected, um, and instead are assaulted when they are barely, you know, a few hours old. It's it's quite a strange thing we do to our to our little boys. Yeah, it seems strange because you know all of these uh, child psychologists or whatever, you know, 
we all know how important these like early childhood experiences are in terms of our you know when we develop later on that's why you know freud was you know tell me about your mother or whatever right Mm -hmm. like it's important Mm -hmm. and i mean it just shocks me that this painful incredibly mean thing I don't know. But let me ask you this, okay? The the name of my show is Mental Self-Defense Radio. The whole point of it is to facilitate a place where people can learn about logical arguments, about rhetoric, right. um, so we can talk about taboo things in a polite way, okay? Right. And I know, I, I was looking at your bio, you have a JD, right? Mm-hmm. So you're you're well aware of what an argument is. I'm curious from your experience, and again, I know, I mean, you deal with this on a day-to-day basis. I can't even imagine. I want to hear some of the worst arguments out there. I know I have my own in my head uh, that you hear. And then actually some of the more convincing arguments. Uh, You know, I'm going to ask you, I know it's stretching a little bit, but ask you to play devil's advocate just a little bit on this issue. What are some of the, what are some of the just ridiculous arguments you hear? Um... Well, the baby won't remember. <laughs> so, I mean, there are a lot of things that if somebody doesn't do in their conscious memory, you know, they don't remember, but it doesn't justify doing it. So, you know, you could... Well, you look at these soldiers that come back from Iraq, and it's not that they don't remember, it's that uh, the the response to trauma is right. to bury the the memory. It doesn't mean right, it didn't right. happen. Exactly. It's the fact that a child can't necessarily... And actually, we have a lot of evidence that the baby does remember Um uh, babies who who have been circumcised have a much uh, more distressed response to pain, for example, from vaccinations later in their childhood. Um, and we all know that we're perfectly willing. I mean, if if the baby truly didn't remember anything, you know, then everybody who plays Mozart to the child while the child's in the womb and tries to create a positive, warm environment you know while the mother is pregnant i mean and you're just wasting your time why bother just do yeah, whatever you, you know you and, got becky here nodding like emphatically <laughs> like yeah this is totally <laughs> right so uh, that's a really that's a really dumb you know argument but you know when i say dumb argument people who haven't thought about this um often just really kind of you have to you have to think about it when you're in a culture for which this in which this is a norm it's it's easy to understand understand and when it's such an awful thing and when doctors do it it's you people can be forgiven for initially saying well you know really i mean i just thought that was the right thing to do i mean isn't that isn't that better for the baby you know isn't it cleaner that's another really you know really crazy argument that somehow cutting off a body part is cleaner than leaving a body part and you know what i say to people is if you can teach your child to 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 brush his teeth you can't clean him to wash teach him to wash his genitals i mean well i I think it was uh, a friend of mine said you know her son said to her that's the only part of my body that's fun to wash (laughs) um you know hey Um, hey now keep it clean this is a this is a well it is clean we're talking cleanliness oh oh, that's true good point (laughs) touche uh you know the funny thing is is uh dr dina dell uh who's a big um uh advocate for for stopping this leaving babies intact right yeah yeah he uh I remember his argument. I saw him on a news thing, and he said that uh, about the cleanliness argument. He's like, "Well, if that's if you know, why not just use soap? I mean, you think that that gets dirty? Then try being a woman. But we don't do genital mutilation right. in our culture on women. That's right. We don't we don't trim you know women's genitalia. The other thing I, I like to point out is that it's never been convincingly or demonstrated convincingly or otherwise that that unwashed genitalia, you know, threaten the world order. I mean, people can pretty much do what they want with their bodies. As long as their own sexual partners are okay with it, then it's okay. That's really something that it's almost a fright. Um, it's almost something that people say to frighten parents. Like, you know, you're not doing the right thing by your child if you don't do this to to him. So, you know, those are, those are some really, you know, well, I, of the I common two, arguments. The other I, one, I hear two is, arguments that I'd be curious because to me, you know, the one I hear is that, oh, well, my dad was that way, I'm that way, and my son will be that way. I mean, isn't that kind of like saying, you know, my dad uh, was a child abuser, my grandfather was a child abuser, and I'm going to be a child abuser. I mean, it's yeah. kind of, it's the same thing. Right. It also happens to be, it only uh, 
holds up for very limited situations because circumcision only really became the norm in this country in the 1940s. So, for example, in my family, um, both my father and my adoptive father were intact, and all my brothers are circumcised. So, you know, when adoption, when circumcision was being um, pushed, you know, when it was being sold big time, um, nobody was saying you want your baby to look like you. They were saying, you know, you know, you look such and such a way, but you know, we got a much more improved man out there. He's the cut man. <laughs> so it's it's an ignorant and only very short um, of an argument that only really applies to a very short historical perspective. So, now, Becky, you wanted so, to say something. What, what were you saying there? I just want to tell a funny story related directly to this, where one couple, a uh, very, very. Uh, argumentative against each other mom and dad where mom was saying we are not going to do this to our son and dad said yes we are because my son's going to look like me just like I look my, like my dad this went on for several months until finally the mom had this you know little bit of inspiration and contacted her father-in-law who guess what was then, not that, circumcised uh, uh, and uh, his son never knew so right. you know that's another whole you know way to shoot down that whole argument right yeah, I mean, the other thing is that children, you know, we, we adopt children from abroad. Uh, children have different color eyes than their parents. They have different color hair than their parents. Yeah, it's so, we don't totally own arbitrary. Them. We don't disown them for that reason. We don't say, you know, you're not mine because, you know, your, your, your hair is different. I mean, it's, it's once again, it's a grasping at straws kind of argument. And those kinds of arguments usually are promulgated when people really don't know how to justify the unjustifiable. You know, so they use these explanations that sort of sound good for a minute. But in fact, there is no good reason, there is no justification for cutting a normal body part off your baby's penis. Hey, it George, makes no George, sense. I, I, I agree with you 100%. I really do. I think it's it's so shocking to me that this is such a controversial subject. It really right. is. Um, we're coming up on our on our uh, break here. It's uh, you know our top of the hour break. It takes about five minutes. We run the CNN uh, news feed and whatnot. Uh, can you hang out with us? Uh, absolutely. Oh man, I really appreciate it. I'm sorry that uh, we kept you waiting on our phone lines while the the techs were trying to get everything going. Sandy and Cottonwood, I see you there online. I I, I hate to do this to you, but we're running into our long break. If you if you hang in there, fine. But if you want to call back because you don't want to hang on for five minutes, that's okay too. I will put you right through. This is a fascinating subject. You know, the question I'm asking is circumcision a crime? Come on back. Mental Self Defense Radio. We've got Becky McInnes and Georgian Chapin with us from Intact America. Come on back after the break. AM 630 K-Talk. Preserving the American way for a new American tomorrow. Wake up without yuck in your lungs or the dark cloud of lung cancer or heart disease looming over your future. Have the energy and health you deserve by simply calling Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis at 801-738-5390. Forget what you've seen from TV and the movies. Hypnosis is powerful and natural and has been accepted by the American Medical Association since the 1950s. Our methods have proven time and again to be more effective than pills, patches, gum, and willpower for quitting smoking. If you've tried the rest, now call the best. Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis, 801-738-5390. That's Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis, 801-738-5390. Be sure to ask about our proven weight loss and natural breast enlargement programs. Visit us online at slchypnosis.com. May is Mother's Day. Here's a couple of reminders from Price's Guaranteed Doors. First, doesn't mom deserve the best working garage door? Are you tired of trying to fix it? For a one-time cost of $259, we'll give your mom the best working door for the rest of her life. Second, all of you who bought a new home from one of our premier builders, Ivory Homes, D.R. Horton, MacArthur Homes, or Peary Homes, remember, go to PricesDoors.com and register for your free lifetime maintenance program. Every door we sell comes with one. 
And just for Mother's Day, she can get a new Genie Garage Door Opener with a keyless entry, complete and installed, for only $259. Call Price's Doors today at 975-7575. That's 975-7575. Home of the Lifetime Maintenance Program. You're listening to Utah's first number one talk station. K-Talk AM 630 KTKK Sandy Salt Lake City. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. CNN Radio, I'm Shelby Lynn. Photos of a bloodied and close-up glimpse of the body of terrorist leader Osama bin Laden are not for public consumption. That's the decision of the White House. The president made the decision after getting a mixed bag of opinion from his national security team. That included CIA Director Leon Panetta, who had told interviewers it seemed logical a photo of proof would be needed. Instead, spokesman Jay Carney indicated... It is not in our national security interests to uh, allow those images, as has been in the past, uh, been the case, to become icons to rally opinion against the United States. Carney said inevitably, even with the photos, some around the world would still not believe. Bob Costantini, CNN, Washington. President Obama heads to Ground Zero tomorrow to mark the death of the most wanted terrorist in the world, where it all started. He invited former President George W. Bush along, but Mr. Bush declined. CNN's David Gergen explains it may not be a case of sour grapes for Mr. Bush, as it is for some in the former Bush administration. He and his family, and you see this in the fathers, well, they have an old-fashioned view that we only have one president at a time, and a former president should essentially stay in the shadows and not be second guessing. Mr. Obama will lay a wreath at the 9 11 memorial during his visit tomorrow. Planned job cuts fell last month to the lowest level so far this year. Analysts say employers are actually hiring more employees now than they're laying off. Britain's Prince Charles, a longtime supporter of sustainable and organic agriculture, delivered the keynote speech today at the Future of Food Conference at Georgetown University. The Prince of Wales is also expected to meet later today with President Obama during what's billed as a three-day visit to the U.S. For news anytime, go to CNN.com. This is CNN Radio. The best value? Simple. It's the one that lasts. Like the Midas Secure Stop Brake Service. New brake pads or shoes just $89.99 per axle installed. With a guarantee good for as long as you own your car. New brake pads or shoes installed. Just $89.99 per axle. Midas. Total car care. Total customer care. Additional parts labor. Shop fees and taxes extra. Most vehicles. See manager for guarantee terms. At participating Midas. Live from Progressive. Flo here with breaking news. Let's go to Jim in the chopper. Hey, Flo, looks like Progressive is offering the Snapshot discount. It's their biggest discount ever. Should be huge. That's big, Jim. But what's with the chopper? What do you mean? It's a chopper. Choppers are sweet. They kind of are. The Snapshot discount. It's new. It's a big deal. And it's finally here. Learn more at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and its affiliates. Mayfield Village, Ohio. Prices vary based on how you buy. Snapshot is not available in all states. Are you being audited? Have you not filed tax returns for years? Is the IRS coming to your home or place of business? The IRS will relentlessly pursue you for unpaid taxes. I'm Patrick Cox, founder of Taxmasters. Listen, don't take on the IRS by yourself. Our former IRS agents and tax professionals have helped many good people just like you. Don't wait weeks for an appointment. Call Taxmasters right now to get started. Call 1-800-307-4310. That's 1-800-307-4310. Or go to txmstr.com. If you've ever wanted a truly spectacular diamond ring, you'll want to visit Jared this Thursday through Sunday. That's because this Thursday through Sunday, when you purchase your diamond at Jared, you'll receive up to a $1,000 reward toward the purchase of a beautiful diamond setting. Choose from thousands of diamonds and have your one-of-a-kind ring created right here at Jared. Get set in diamonds this Thursday through Sunday for a reward worth up to $1,000. Today's Medical Minute is brought to you by Brandon Babcock. 
Did you know that more than 24 million people in the United States have been diagnosed with diabetes, and most of them suffer from type 2 diabetes? Hi, I'm Dr. Brandon Babcock of the Functional Endocrinology Institute of Utah. In today's Medical Minute, I will be discussing my revolutionary new approach to type 2 diabetes. Your diabetic treatment doesn't need to be uncomfortable anymore. In place of traditional insulin shots, patients who follow a customized diet and nutrition program will not only start to see the symptoms become more manageable, but the disease actually reverses completely. Find out more about our program and to see if you qualify by calling now. For more information on type 2 diabetes treatment from Dr. Babcock, please call 801-337-9797. That's 801-337-9797. Or visit utahdiabeteshelp.com. That's utahdiabeteshelp.com. Let's be real. Smoking sucks. It's a nasty, expensive, unattractive, and thoroughly unhealthy habit. There's the acrid smell in your clothes and on your breath. Yuck. Not to mention the increased health risk that cigarette smoke presents to those nearest and dearest to you. Call Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis now for your free consultation to learn how you can quit today. 801-738-5390. That's Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis, 801-738-5390. Exposing politics as pro wrestling. Welcome to Mental Self Defense Radio and the Jake Shannon Radio Program. Now, here's your host, Jake Shannon. Five to one, baby. One and five. No one here. Welcome back, Mental Self Defense Radio. I'm your host, Jake Shannon. I am joined today in studio. We got Becky McInnes uh, from the Utah Burr Center. You can go to Utah. Uh, additionally, we are extra super stoked because we've got Georgianne Chapin with us. Uh, are you still there, Georgianne? Of course I am. Hey, thank you so much for, for uh, we were having some gaffes there with the phone. By the way, all the people that were listening and trying to call in earlier, call in now. Well, actually, we've only got one phone line, so you're going to have to wait until Sandy from Cottonwood. You're okay taking some callers, right, uh, Georgianne? Absolutely. Okay, wonderful. Oh no! I uh, hey, you know what? Oh. I didn't hit the VIP line, Steph. Can you get Georgianne back? Hey, Sandy, you're on the on the air right now. What do you want to say, Georgianne? We dropped her, but we'll bring her right back. Okay, you know what? I'm I'm looking in the Bible dictionary, <clears throat> and circumcision was a token of the uh, Abrahamic covenant during Old Testament dispensations, and it uh-huh. symbolized some aspects of separation or dedication to God. Uh, yeah, you're, so you're saying in the Bible? Yeah, yeah, in the Bible. Okay. Uh, the world, let me ask you a question, though. So in yeah. the Bible, it says you should be able to, if your children talk back to you, you should be able to stone them to death. Okay. Well, let me let me just read this, okay? Because well, wait, I'm just, just asking you a question about that. Oh, <clears throat> well, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> and so, but circumcision's okay. No, I don't. Oh, oh I, I, no, no, no. But let me let me just read what this says. Okay, so go I, ahead, and you'll understand. Okay, the subjects of circumcision were male Israelites properly when eight years uh... oh and there I did it again gosh darn it Sandy I'm sorry I dropped you because I do not know what I'm doing with regards to these phones are you there Georgian? yes I am <laughs> I, I apologize I'm, not only do we have uh, technical difficulties with the phones we got a big monkey here trying to run these buttons and I don't know what I'm doing half the time so I'm sorry to drop you like that uh, she was dropping some, some religious stuff and hopefully she'll co- call back uh, Sandy, uh, I think you were from Cottonwood Heights. Please call back. I apologize. Uh, I promise not to drop anybody from here on out. Georgianne, we were talking before the break, before the long break, we were talking about some of the the more uh, crazy arguments. What are some of the more maybe difficult arguments? I, I find that these a lot of people tend to just throw, hey, it's my faith, it's my belief system, just let's stop talking about it. What What do you find is really the some of the more sophisticated or, or hard arguments to get around? Well, um, for cultures, for people who take their um, take their their document literally, um, whether it's the Bible or you know the Koran or the Old Testament, for example, um, they're not going to be persuaded probably by by some of our arguments. Um, that represents um, I mean, of course, the New Testament does not 
call for circumcision. Yeah, that's um, more of a that's so, more of an Old Testament thing, right? Right, correct. But they're not going to be necessarily convinced by our bioethical arguments, which is that, or our, or our um, legal arguments in this country, which is, or the international well, human rights. Yeah, arguments. human rights arguments, individual right, rights. Which is that we have, you know. We have rights as individuals, and babies are individuals. They're people, and uh, they don't. They might eventually choose to have a certain belief system, but in this country, where in the United States, where religious freedom is one of our guarantees, the courts have been very clear that you can believe whatever you want, but that you cannot harm other people um, in order to carry out that belief. So, for example, we have a lot of cases where we have said um, uh, people who do not believe in, in blood transfusions, for example, Jehovah's Witnesses, it's fine for the parents to believe that, but their children have not, you know, they're too young to be, uh, you know, to be re- accept the consequences of their parents' beliefs. So we will not withhold transfusions from children of Jehovah's Witnesses if they need them to save their lives. You can believe that handling a snake, poisonous snake, will not kill you if you're a righteous person, but you can't um, mess around with poisonous snakes in front of your toddler. Um, so those those things are well established. The other well, why thing does I think, it, why does it fall by the wayside? I mean, what is the that people I, well, are not let me tell you, this in a principled me, way? Yeah, let me tell you why. Because circumcision is not a religious thing in the United States. It's done the number of religious circumcisions, really religious circumcisions, done in this country is is infinitesimal. It is tiny. Most circumcisions are carried out in hospitals as part of a very strange medical tradition that says that women's doctors, right, obstetricians who are trained to take care of women's reproductive organs, that they somehow have gotten into this cutting off part of little baby boy's penises. And it goes back a long time. It's a very strange practice that we have in American medicine and the religious arguments are often again brought in in much of the same way as oh you know I want my baby to look like me it's we're looking for ways to justify the unjustifiable well which is so interesting we say, doctors to me, do it must be okay this is the interesting thing to me because a lot of these people that that are particularly religious I'm not really a religious person I just try to be honest and kind right my dealings mm-hmm. uh, in a secular manner but um, you know the I think the people that make the religious argument, it's totally inconsistent because these are the same pay- people that say that a baby's rights begin at conception. Right. Well, and I that it know. shouldn't be, it's, yeah. you know, that abortion should be uh, illegal. And yet, if a baby's rights begin right then at inception, wouldn't that mean that they have the right to not be like violently cut? I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know. Like when you say people who make the arguments, the people who make the arguments, it's all over the place in terms of people's other politics. The, the fact is, however, we have a well-established set of bioethical principles that say that you cannot, that there is such thing as proxy consent. In other words, a parent can agree to medical treatment on behalf of his or her child, but there are limits to that. And those limits are the baby has to be sick and the treatment has to be necessary to save the baby's life or health. You can't take your baby into the doctor and say, cut off his fingernails. Cut off his right hand. Cut off his toes. And, you know, people will say, oh, well, that's ridiculous. You know, of course we can't do that. But what? Right, but it's completely logical. Say, cut, off part of his, cut off part of his penis? I mean, that makes no sense. So you're not allowed to do that on behalf of somebody else. So a lot of times when people talk about choice, it's like, okay, but whose choice? Why should this be your choice? Shouldn't it be the choice of the person who's going to have to live with the consequences for the rest of his life? And what about what about the argument that people make that the baby feels no pain? Well, of course we know that's ridiculous. I mean, would you, you know, just go try, you know, you're going to like poke a pin in your child just to, to prove that fact? Of course that's ridiculous. But did you know that into the 1970s, people were conducting heart surgery on babies without, just with curare, just with paralyzing agents under the totally insane um, conception that babies feel no pain. I mean, that is just, anybody who would, it's just unspeakable, uh, the ignorance that would allow someone to make that argument. And, of course, every doctor and every parent intuitively knows that babies feel pain. I mean, we're, we're way beyond the era of, 
of diaper pins. Everyone uses disposable diapers now, but anybody my age or older, whoever accidentally, you know, touch their poor baby with a diaper pin knows that babies feel pain. See, so that's see, I can, an absurd uh, argument. You know, I told you Becky's kind of a hippie, but I can tell this is getting her fired up. That's that's all leaving the room right now. She's she's getting a little excited about uh, this issue. I think it's it is see, uh, such a common sense argument. You know, we had a caller uh, off air ask, you know, what is the history of this? Because oh, my understanding my. it's really a Victorian type of thing. It's not Yes, it is. It's, it's new. Victorian England and America. Masturbation was thought to be a terrible, terrible not only not really a sin, but actually just a terribly dangerous thing that caused um, unusual hair growth, paralysis, yeah, blindness, insanity, all that. Yeah, we know all. blindness, right. So the idea was if you if you whacked away at a boy's genitals, he would never touch himself again. Now, of course, we know that's not the case. Um, we know that circumcised men, uh, you know, yeah, they partake in that just as much. They, as anybody, Yeah, sure. and, and we also, you know, know that that's just. But that is the origin. People who like to say there's a religious origin that is completely false. It's Victorian England and America, and it was an anti-masturbation move. And the reason we circumcised babies. Rather than teenagers, I'm sure pretty doesn't take a lot of imagination for people to understand why. Yeah, a whole lot back. easier to a whole lot easier to tie a baby down than it is to tie a 14 year old down, and it's a very, very, very sad thing for our children in this country that we do it. I assume you know, Jake, and of course Becky knows this, and and hopefully your listeners know that this is not a universal um, custom that countries uh, with far better health status than the U.S., um, far more, um, you know, less sexually transmitted diseases, um, spend far less on health care and have healthier populations, do not, do not circumcise their babies. They're appalled. All of Northern Europe where, you know, of course, most of, of Utah's traditional population comes from, yeah, you know, Norway, Sweden, yeah, I mean, they... You, you couldn't get a circumcision in, in a hospital in, in Norway or Sweden or the Netherlands. Or, uh, it, it's just considered to be a completely, um, not just unnecessary, but really strange and appalling thing to do to a newborn baby. So we should, um, you know, we, we need to, to understand that the rest of the world doesn't do it and they do just fine. The famous Latin lovers, you know, that are, you know, the material of the movies of, of the olden days, you know, all are, are walking around intact. And if you're, if you've ever been to France or Germany or any of Latin America or most of Asia, um, of course you don't know what people have inside their trousers, but there's a, uh, about a 90% or better chance that that those men have their foreskins intact and are doing just fine and probably enjoying a um, uh, a more complete sexual experience because of it. That, that's the other thing that makes it hard, though. People don't like to think they're missing something, and it's irrefutable that if you have lost that part of your body, you are missing something now. You can still be fine and happy and a completely functional, happy human being, and you can make babies and have a good sex life, but you, there's no question that you are missing a body part that was put there for protection and for pleasure. Now, Georgianne, I've got, uh, I've got Elaine in Salt Lake City. Uh, Elaine, are you there? Yeah. Hey, so uh, you're saying religion has nothing to do with it? What, what do you well, want to say? What I'm saying is that, is that, you know, I mean, well, first of all, can I ask you, this is one heck of a topic. How did you come up with this topic? I have Who a devious the mind. On the phone? Who's the person on the phone? Uh, so this is Georgianne Chapin. She's the, the head. She's the executive director at uh, Intact America, which is an advocacy group to stop people from doing this circumcision business. And Jake, uh, I think you well, have to give well, our website possibly, right? Oh, of course. Yeah, uh, Elaine, hold on a second. Okay. So it's intactamerica.org, right? Okay. Yes, intactamerica.org. And then you guys are all over Facebook, too. Okay. Yeah, we sure are. We have a Facebook page, yeah. Well, well Elaine, know, I'm sorry. I didn't want to interrupt you. Tell me, tell me your question. Okay. Well, I was going to say, I'm married to a man that's not circumcised and, I, and everything is fine. This is a myth. A lot of this stuff is a bunch, it's just a myth. It's, it, it was because of hygiene and all this other kind of hooey. Uh, and, uh, they, that just is not true. They, men that are circumcised, men that are not circumcised don't get any more diseases than anybody else. Yep. 
Yeah, well I think said. you're preaching to the couldn't choir say, here, Elaine. Couldn't yeah. say it better myself. But, but, uh, I mean, you know. but the thing that I'm getting at is that, like, we got science Christians out there that don't believe in any any doctors at all. In fact, they just had a case about it. Their daughter who had sugar diabetes, and they would not treat her, and she died. Yeah, George well, Ann brought that really, up in the first hour. really important to think that just because a doctor does something doesn't mean it's, it's, it's treatment. I mean, what is it we're treating by cutting off a normal body part? Yeah, that but you're going to qualify extreme. as treatment. You're using that's extreme just, that's as an example. Kind of, what uh, I'm getting at is that, that whether we like that religion or not, they have a right to believe that. They, and I know that sounds horrible. Yeah, but, but, but the point that George Ann brought up, Elaine, was that there's some, like, you know, some uh, extreme sects of baptism, say, in the South, and they believe that uh, God won't allow, uh, you know, you can t- take a, a venomous snake bite and uh, and you'll be okay because God said so, but legally you can't subject a child to that, regardless if you're the parent or not. Yeah. They want we we have to separate it. And once again, Elaine, the other thing is most circumcision, this is, you know, this is a perfect red herring, uh, the religious argument. No, I would imagine Hey, hey, hey guys, hold on We're coming up on a break I can't control the break uh, Elaine, I'm going to let you go Because of the okay. dogs in the background okay. We're here with uh, Becky McInnes, midwife And Georgian Chapin From intactamerica.org Come on back AM 630 K-Talk Spreading the truth From Salt Lake City To all of America On k-talk.com Hey, this is Nye the Computer Girl from PC Laptop. A lot of people wonder how we build the best computers on the planet. Well, here's the secret. We handpick only the highest quality parts. Then each computer is hand-built right here in the USA in a warehouse full of magical elves. Just kidding about the elves. We believe a great computer should come with a great warranty. And that's why every new PC Laptops desktop computer comes with our exclusive lifetime service and parts warranty for free. That means if your computer blows up in 10 years, you're covered. Isn't that cool? No one else does that. And to make it extra sweet, we're doing zero down, zero interest financing for up to half a year. OAC. So get into any of our nine PC Laptops locations right now. Or call us at one eight seven seven five nine six save. That's one eight seven seven five nine six S A V E. Or check us out at PCLaptops dot com. PC Laptops, we love you. May is Mother's Day. Here's a couple of reminders from Price's Guaranteed Doors. First, doesn't Mom deserve the best working garage door? Are you tired of trying to fix it? For a one-time cost of $259, we'll give your mom the best working door for the rest of her life. Second, all of you who bought a new home from one of our premier builders, Ivory Homes, D.R. Horton, MacArthur Homes, or Peary Homes, remember, go to PricesDoors.com and register for your free lifetime maintenance program. Every door we sell comes with one. And just for Mother's Day, she can get a new Genie Garage Door Opener with a keyless entry, complete and installed, for only $259. Call Price's Doors today at 975-7575. That's 975-7575. Home of the Lifetime Maintenance Program. Tune in each weekday afternoon at 4 for Drive Time Live, the Mills Crenshaw Show, brought to you by eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Mills. Your source for the emergency food storage you've always been planning to get. eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Mills. The Voice of Utah. AM 630 K-Talk. K-Talk.com. Number one for the most live local two-way talk. I just call. I love you. I just uh, what a nice song. Boy, I wish the baby boys heard this song instead of what they uh, are getting at the hands of a lot of doctors. Uh, today we're talking about a bunch of things. We started off talking about not natural childbirth. We've got Becky McInnes with us from uh, UtahBirthCenter.com. Uh, and... I wanted to change the tone, and we've got an excellent guest uh, who really knows the ins and outs of this, lives it, uh, Georgian Chapin from Intact America. We're asking the question, is circumcision a crime? I want to hear the arguments. Uh, I certainly do think it's a crime. I think everybody here... (laughs) 
uh, on the air does, but maybe maybe you differ. I don't know. Maybe you agree with us, uh, but we're very fortunate. Are you still there, Georgianne? Sure, I am. Hey, I really appreciate you spending so much time with us today and, and trying to wake people up. Um, you know, we Becky and I were talking about it. Uh, part of the reason is I think maybe people don't want to admit they're wrong. You know, maybe they did it be- before they really thought about the issue. They circumcised their children, and that's they right. don't. And of course, that's true of a lot of things we do, right? But once we realize that it wasn't such a great thing, then you know, let's not do it again, or let's let's try and redeem ourselves by talking other people out of doing yeah, it. And it's called learning. It's a good thing, yeah, right? That's right. That's right. And a lot of a lot of parents I talk to say, um, "I feel so. I felt so duped. I feel so guilty. I didn't know anything." Somebody just came up to me, you know, when my baby was just born or when my baby's a few hours old and said, well, you want to circumcise him, don't you? And it was the first time I'd ever talked about it. You know, again, nothing to do with religion. Somebody, a, a nurse or a doctor, walked up to him in the hospital and said, well, you're going to do this, right? Sign on the dotted line so we know where to send the bill. Um, and, you know, that's, and I, when they brought my baby back to me, I realized what a terrible mistake I had made. I felt like I had betrayed my baby. I've heard... So many regretful parents, and you know what I say is, tell everybody you know, you know, to spare the next child. That's all you can do. I hear your your child had the experience; it's too bad, but you can speak out and tell people what you know. Yeah, it's like it's like breaking a cycle of child abuse. You know, if you have an abusive Mm -hmm. parent, you don't want, you know, you hope that you won't do that to your kids, right? Right. Um, Now you ask, can we can we just like spend a second on this issue of is it a crime? Clearly. Uh, the, the police are not sweeping into hospitals and arresting doctors who perform circumcisions. So, yeah, so, I'm, I'm saying it not in the terms of a legal code. I'm saying, is right. it a crime in terms of, right. like, if we were to really enforce things unilaterally according well, to right. co- English common law, this would be illegal. Well, think, yes, exactly. So the fact that people are not getting arrested for doing it doesn't mean that it conforms, that circumcision conforms to legal behavior. For one thing, there is no informed consent because the parent, as I said, the parent cannot consent legally under bioethical principles and under legal principles, in fact, you know, in any kind of study or medical setting to an unnecessary procedure that will permanently, you know, that has permanent consequences for that child. So there is no informed consent. There it, it does not adhere to the principles of bioethics. It doesn't adhere to the justice principle. We protect little girls, and we don't protect little boys. Now, how can that be in a, in a society that has that has um, that has adopted a principle of equal protection? How can we say that it's all right to cut? Little boys, but a terrible thing to cut little girls. So well, I think I think Georgian, Georgian, I think that this country has an incredible ability to hold contradictory ideas in their head at the same time. Uh, we have a president with the Nobel Peace Prize going into more wars than even the warmonger before him. I mean, I think that we have a bigger problem, and this is one of the many many symptoms we've got. Yolana uh, been holding very patiently in. Uh, Salt Lake City, are you there, Yolanda? Yes, I am. Thank how, you. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. How hey, are you've you? got. I'm doing great. You got Becky McInnes, midwife, and you've got Georgian uh, Chapin from Intact America. What What do you want to talk about? Hello, I just want to say that I'm uh, from Europe. I'm from Prague, the Czech Republic, and um, I've just never, I've never heard of this before. I was pregnant with my second child two years ago. Um, found out he was a little boy. Um, I am married to, uh, to an American. And uh, my husband did want to get him circumcised because that's just a thing that everybody has done. Now, as you know, most a lot of Europeans are not men are not circumcised. That's just something we don't do in Europe. And um, I really didn't know much about it till I actually looked what the procedure was on YouTube. And I watched the whole thing. I made myself watch the whole thing, and I just cried through the whole entire video just sobbing and just ended up emailing it to my husband and when he got home from work he said we're not doing it Um, i mean that's really it isn't it because when you see it you're like man that baby is feeling pain there is no kidding this is awful and scary it is very awful and it is very scary and um there's really no purpose to you know there's no really purpose in doing it i mean whether you have a boy or girl you need to teach them you know either way to wash themselves I mean, that's just part of life, and, you know, to have good hygiene. And um, 
Hey, so, had you heard of uh, Georgianne's organization before? I have not. This is actually the first time I've actually um, I've heard of it. Well, spread it around. Intactamerica.org. You can find them on Facebook. Friend them there. Uh, what else? What What else can people do, uh, Georgianne? We have right now, uh, Jake, we have a put down the knife campaign that we have mounted calling on doctors to stop circumcising babies, to say no to circumcision. I, I was very surprised when I became very active, you know, on, in this area to see how many doctors, I can't tell you how many times I've been told by doctors, uh, hey, you know, why are you blaming me? Blame the parents. I don't like circumcision. I didn't circumcise my own son, but I do it because the parents insist. And you know, I would, I will say, you know, what I said, you know, on this show. Would you, would you cut off the child's arm if the parents insist? Of course not. You're the one, doctor. You're the one that's picking up the instrument, that sharp instrument, and cutting off part of that baby's penis. Yeah, I mean, that's so, the same argument the guards in Auschwitz used. I mean, that's lame. Yeah, that's so right. lame, but very, very, very common. So the put down the knife campaign, um, we have a, we had an open letter run this week in the Washington Post telling obstetricians and gynecologists who, um, as I said earlier, you know, are trained to, uh, to, uh, you know, treat women's reproductive organs, reproductive systems, um, telling them to stop. Can I Put down something? the knife, doctor. Don't circumcise that baby boy. It's not necessary. He's not your patient. He didn't consent. Put down the knife. So that is, you, and you can, um, sign on to uh, intactamerica.org and you can actually send a letter to the American Academy of Pediatrics, the American Academy of Family Physicians, and to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. Okay, hold on a second. Yolanda, Yolanda, you had a question, though. What were well, you... I just wanted to say that when my son was born, that um, the OB never advised me or never really talked to me about, you know, the circumcision, or it was really, I think it's really left up to the parent. But as soon as my son was born and they knew that um, I wanted to keep my son intact, I actually had, before I was discharged from the hospital, I had three different pediatricians that actually came up to me, males, and um, they were actually glad and, you know, that we kept our son, you know, intact and we're talking about, you know, talking about it. And so I think the pediatricians are really for on keeping boys intact. I think it's the OBs that need to... You know, let the mothers know or, you know, educate the public or I, I think everybody needs to watch the video, really. I mean, before they decide to, I mean, we don't really have the right, I mean, to, to make a decision for, you know, to be having this done. I yeah, mean, no, Yolanda, you're right. Part. I mean, you're, you're preaching to the choir here. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? I got other callers. Sorry. Nope, that's everything. Thank you very much. Hey, that's thanks. Great. Thanks, thank you Yolanda. So um, well, that's that's kind of good news. Do you, you do you find kind of broad support when you do bring up this issue, or is it really mostly opposition? You know, people once people start to think about it, um, they get it. <laughs> and anybody who gets it never goes back the other way. I mean, nobody says, "Oh my God, I get it," and then they come back the next day and say, "You know what? I got it yesterday." But you know, no. On second thought, I really think it is a good idea. To cut so, Georgian, Georgian, is it safe to say that once you go intact, you never go back? <laughs> well, I'm sure there are men that could decide in their adulthood, you know, that they want to do something different. There are certainly people like that. But but um, my friend Marilyn Milos, who founded the National Organization of Circumcision Information Resource Centers, no sir, says, um, why would you want to have penis reduction surgery when somebody tells <laughs> that's, her? <laughs> that's an interesting way. To, yeah, right. you, that's a great way to sell it, to be honest. Right. Uh, we've got uh, Tricia calling in from uh, from Farmington. And these doggone phones. Are you there, uh, Trisha? Hello, Trisha. Want to make a call. Please hang up and try again. Oh, oh boy, she sounds awful familiar. That Trisha and... there. Uh, try again, Trisha. We've got Sandy in uh, in Salt Lake City. Hi, Sandy. How are you today? Hi, I want to defend myself because I was just letting you know where it came from. Oh, sure, no problems. I'm I glad. I'm agree. glad you. Uh, I'm actually glad that you called back because I'm a. I've got such stupid monkey fingers here that I hit the wrong button, so I'm, okay, I'm thrilled you I, called back. Okay, realizing that, I wish I had never done it. And I have a, a daughter who uh, has five sons, and her husband is Jewish, and so that was one of their uh, one of their things. But I just want to read this. Um, it says um, um, it, it was it, it, this happened was was because of the law of Moses. Are you still there? 
Oh yeah, we're still we're here, hustling. and I'm I'm thrilled because Good. you know most people would say, oh, I did it, and I've got to huddle and shit. It's you know what you did it because you didn't know the information. Right. You may, now you're smarter for it, and you won't do it again. Okay, now listen to this. This is a marked contrast to the church among the Nephites, in which there seems to have been a cessation of the law immediately upon their awareness of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay, okay. So now look, Sandy. Look, I'm just going to be real with you. I mean, people yeah. could go read these things themselves. It's pretty boring uh, for people who aren't necessarily into that. Yeah, right. I'm just. I'm just trying to make that aware that we got a big audience here. Okay, but but religiously, you know, it was ceased uh, in this in, in in America. So yeah, I agree. I agree. Not Anything that you want, any questions or any way? Uh, have yes. you heard of George Ann's organization, Intact mm-hmm. America? Terrific. Ha- have you heard of her her organization? No, I, I haven't. I will go online. That's fantastic. And, and watch we love for I, new people to know about us. Right. Okay, yeah. I will, and, and I appreciate what you're doing, and I wish I'd never done it to my son. Well, you well, know what? <laughs> and here's the thing. It's not a big... I mean, okay, it is a big deal, but people make mistakes. Nobody here is yeah. down on you for it, right? Like, so well, it happens... Well, just go along like sheeple. Yeah, you know? but now you're smart. You're like, hey, right. I regret it, and let me tell you, I did it. I regret it. Yeah. Don't do it. That's great. You're helping people. Right. Like if I might, I'd like to say one other thing. You know, we keep coming back to defending, you know, ourselves against the whole hygiene thing, and you know, you yeah. can teach. You know, let me just say, the body. It wasn't has the hygiene way. thing, though. That's not what it was. That's what they think it was. But hey, that's hey not Sandy, what it was. Sandy, you know, I and I, I hate to do this, but I got. Sure. One phone line, and I got yeah. a bunch of callers waiting. So, so yeah. hey, thanks for your call. You what, what were you going to say, George Ann? I'm that sorry. The body has a nice way of taking care of itself. We don't need, we don't teach, we don't need to take like a a scrub brush and go after our genitals. Basically, babies, baby boys foreskins um, are are they adhere? They're stuck to the head of the baby boy's penis for a reason. That's for protection. You're not supposed to force it. You don't need to pull it back and wash it. You need to leave it alone and before. Or the child, usually by the time the child reaches young adulthood, sometimes earlier, sometimes later, it will separate the way it needs to. There are grown men with good sex lives who still don't have a totally separated foreskin. So forget the hygiene, the special treatment. Just dip your baby in the bath water like you do the rest of his body, you know, like you do your daughter. Yeah, you don't I do mean, any special procedure. We are we are scared to death that if this unfamiliar body part, but this normal body part, the foreskin, that if we don't do something special for it, that it's going to, you know, rise up in the night and, and do something terrible to us. Forget about it. The baby's normal. Leave the baby alone. He'll be just fine, as yeah. will you. It's like nobody ever heard of soap or something. Yeah, well, you don't want to use soap on your child's genitals the same way you don't put your little daughter in a, bu- in a bubble bath. Right. It's just just plain old water, folks. You know, that'll do it. No special pulling or pushing or anything. And I'm saying that because sometimes people who have not circumcised their children are feeling very defensive, like somehow they have to do some special procedure to keep the child clean. Nothing could be farther from the truth. But just leave the child alone. You know, as I said, you know, dip the child in bath water, no soaps, no shampoos, no special um, peroxide. I've heard all kinds of crazy stuff. Just, you know, leave the child alone and he'll be fine. Yeah. Now we've got uh, Trisha who uh, is calling back. Trisha, are you there? Yes. Yeah, sorry. We were getting a weird uh, do-do-do, this number. <laughs> What's going on? What, what did you want to uh, bring up? We're talking today. We've got uh, in studio, we got Becky McGinnis from uh, UtahBirthCenter.com and Georgian Chapin from IntactAmerica.org. Uh, what is it that you wanted to talk about today, Tricia? Um, well, first I want to say that um, I we delivered our fifth child with Becky McInnes, and it oh, was great, completely wonderful experience. Um, and second, we have we have five children. Our first three are boys, then we had a little girl, and then our last was a boy. And our first three, you know, I had been educated. I'm Miss Mom. I'm read, read every book that you could possibly find and about babies and birth and child care and all that stuff. And so I I personally thought, you know, gosh, I really don't want to do this with my boys, but my husband. Um, making sacrifices through marriage, I guess I thought that was kind of what we were supposed to do. Felt like, you know, he wanted our boys to be like him. And so every time, you know, with our first three boys, I'm like, oh, I felt terrible about it every single time. But I did it because I thought that's what, you know, my husband wanted and what was end up being best for our boys. 
And then when we had our daughter, I was so relieved. I couldn't uh-huh. tell you how relieved I was that we did not have to do that. I didn't have to, like, feel this terrible guilt in the bottom of my stomach knowing that my baby was in the other room, you know, being... Oh, gosh, I don't... Want yeah, to it's, it's emotional, and it's okay. Yeah. And here's the thing. You know, people make mistakes. People, it, it's okay. I mean, right? If, if, and I, again, I'm not a religious person, but let's, you know, I'm assuming maybe you're Christian. It's all about forgiveness. It's okay. Just don't do it yeah. anymore, right? Like, yeah. once and you be educated, you know. Yeah. And so, so this time, Becky McKinnis was wonderful because it gave my husband an opportunity to ask questions. And, you know, the subject came up during some of our, our, um, our groups and, and meeting with Becky. The subject came up a couple times, and so then he was able to ask some questions, and what about the cleanliness, and what about, you know, um, penile cancer, and what about all these things, and so he was able to address those a little bit more. Then when we were with our OB, you know, I don't think he felt like he was comfortable enough to ask that, or the subject didn't come up. Well, and the funny the thing is, is and this more. is the whole point uh, Georgianne is, was making earlier, that once people actually are... Uh, made aware of this issue mm-hmm. that they come around it's it's yeah. but the point is is why is yeah. this so doggone taboo it's really yeah. ridiculous it's that we can't yeah. talk about this this is a so i mean these are little boys they has nobody they they can't even talk how in the yeah. heck are they going to stand up and say don't do this to me this really right. really hurts well, they, they certainly do say it we have a wonderful bumper sticker that says 10 out of 10 babies say no to circumcision <laughs> uh, if, you, if you look at a video of a baby being circumcised he's saying no yeah hey hey guys thanks for the call trisha yeah. we're talking about circumcision right or wrong come on back after the break k talk the voice of utah AM 630, K-Talk. Talking about Utah since 1965. 63% of Americans are overweight. If you've decided it's time to leave your flat behind, HipFit Weight Loss is for you. HipFit changes habits. Lose the bad habits, lose the weight. HipFit is guaranteed to make your weight loss successful and has absolutely no health risks. HipFit students are not required to count calories, weigh portions, or buy specialty food. Start losing weight immediately. Call 801-635-4488. HipFit is conveniently located at Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis. Ask about our guaranteed to stop smoking program 801-635-4488 thursday may 5th at seven o'clock you can learn the truth about 2012 at the water wellness center 3727 south 900 east in salt lake city join us for a special event 2012 activation understanding the ninth wave of the mayan calendar and the shift of ages The ninth wave has already begun. Back on March 9, 2011, the ninth wave manifested the earthquakes and nuclear crisis in Japan. The ninth wave also ignited revolutions in 12 different Arabic nations in the Middle East. The ninth wave of the Mayan calendar of creation is intended to evolve the consciousness for the birth of a new humanity on December 21, 2012. Now you can be part of this history-making event. Meet documentary filmmakers and Mayan calendar experts at the Water Wellness Center Thursday, May 5th for this powerful experience. Tickets are just $10 and includes a free two-hour DVD. For more information, go to k-talk.com and click on the Water Wellness link or stop by the Water Wellness Center, 3727 South, 900 East in Salt Lake City. Are you looking for specialists in color correction or keratin bond and tape-in extensions? Are you a man, woman, or child in need of a cutting-edge haircut, coloring service, perm, or non-formaldehyde straightening treatment? Then come visit us at Jean Nicole Salon. We provide facial waxing, nail services, and pedicures that will be the perfect topper for any other service. And don't forget, updos, hairstyles, and makeup for any wedding, prom, formal event, or themed party. Yes, we can fulfill all your wedding needs from engagements to bridals and, of course, to making the big day at itself absolutely perfect. At Jean Nicole's, we even have a florist consultant on site. Jean Nicole Salon, call us for an appointment. 801-571-3536. 801-571-3536. We are conveniently located off Fort Street and Draper, and be sure to mention this ad for a free biominal conditioning treatment. Oh, and by the way, we are now hiring. 801-571-3536. Jean Nicole Salon, a professional salon where you feel just like part of the family. Tune in each weekday afternoon at 4 for Drive Time Live, the Mills Crenshaw Show, brought to you by eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Mills. Gourmet meals at your demand, just add water. eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Mills. 
the voice of Utah. AM 630 K-Talk. K-Talk.com. Number one for the most live local two-way talk. Don't forget me, baby. All you gotta do is call. You know how I feel about it. I can do anything at all. Let me help. If your child needs a dad, I can help. Welcome back, Mental Self Defense Radio. I'm your host, Jake Shannon. We are joined in studio. We got Becky McGinnis from UtahBirthCenter.com and also Georgianne Chapin from IntactAmerica.org. Uh, are you still there with us, Georgianne? Yes, I am. Hey, thank you so much for, uh, helping, uh, wake people up. I, you know, I try to make these arguments. You're way better at it than me because you've been around the block and you're a JD, so I just appreciate the conversation. Uh, we've got, actually now we've got a couple. You do a pretty good job, let me say. So <laughs> <That was> Becky. <laughs> hey, hey, thanks a lot. You know, that, that does mean a lot coming from you. Uh, uh, Ricky has been, uh, oh, nope, I'm sorry. Randy in Salt Lake City has been holding, uh, quite a long time. Are you there, Randy? Yeah. Hey, Randy, how's it going today? All right. Uh, first off, from what I've heard, it seems like mostly women are calling in on this issue. That uh, was my perceptions wrong here. I didn't catch all of the program, but yeah, it seems that way. And, but see, but that's why I thought about it. Uh, this has always been deferred. I've been married twice to both times uh, when I had children. They were male, and and the mothers decided. And uh, I don't know. It seemed like it seemed like the. I, I think back when I was a kid. Uh, we had a doctor in the town where I was born, and me and my brothers, none of us got circumcised because the doctor, he didn't believe in doing it. You're and, a lucky uh, man. What's that? You're a lucky man. Well, he, uh, my, my couple of my brothers, they would, they went to school and they would get made fun of, you know, they would, uh, mm-hmm. be in the gym locker. I was probably in my teens, and they were just a year or two behind me, each one of them, and, they decided to have it done later on. Wow. And uh, Well, at least when, they had a choice, though, right? When, when they were older, but th- it made them really sick, you know. They they were down for about a week, mm-hmm. and they, they kind of wished they didn't. And after I saw that, I said, ah, no way for me, but I, I guess I'll just have to be called hogger or something, you know, all the time. Hey, hey, <laughs> Georgian, and I don't mean to interrupt you, Randy, but uh, you, you brought up an interesting point. Th- those statistics are changing now, though, right? Like absolutely. The, ma- the majority absolutely. is now intact. Right. That's right. And, you know, it's so so sad that you would be made fun of for having a normal body, right? I mean, well, that that, but that was, the, that was the odd man out. It was, uh, right. except for the, in the community, there was a lot of uh, Native Americans, mm-hmm. and, and it seemed like none of them had that procedure done on them, and uh, that was one of the tauntings that you'd take. As a right. Kid, There's always been a big. Be are you from Utah? You were, uh, an Indian or something, you know? They, right. They, are you from Are you from Utah, Randy? Uh, Southern Utah. Yeah. There's always been a in in the U.S. There's been a social class uh, connection with circumcision. Back to the old days when circumcision started to be done by doctors, and Becky will appreciate this. You know, in the in what it used to be that women delivered their babies at home with midwives, and as obstetrics evolved as a profession, and women started to deliver their babies in. In hospitals, uh, being circumcised was sort of a status symbol because it meant that your parents had enough money to afford an obstetrician rather than a midwife and for the baby to be born in the hospital. Now, we know that hospitals are not necessarily safe places for babies. And in fact, you, you brought up the Native American um, tradition. Uh, the most recent circumcision case that was sort of publicized uh, in the press was the case of a of a Native American baby named um, Eric uh, Keefe, and he died as a result of circumcision on the Rosebud Indian Reservation in South Dakota. He was just a baby and was circumcised in the hospital. And you know, I'm sure that he, I don't know if his parents know that it wasn't you know even part of their cultural t- tradition. But your your uh, listeners, Jake, need to know that circumcision is not a risk free procedure. Uh, babies die, babies can bleed to death, which is what happened to this baby. Babies can lose a large part of their penis and be rendered unable to um, to perform sexually for the rest of their lives. So it's unusual, but it is not unheard of. And the doctor who treated your family, Randy, was actually a progressive doctor ahead of his time for, for refusing to do the procedure. Uh, 40s hey. and 50s there. Hey Randy, anything you? Around, but they, uh, Randy, anything else you want to add? I got a long line of callers okay, here. Okay, I think that the 
the mothers are the ones that get it's because this it, with my sons it, it always happened after I was gone. You know, they'd come and do it at night or something. You know, right? And the doctors would come around and, and get the mother, and they're half asleep and drugged and everything else. That's and right. And, the, and then the mother's just like, oh yeah, okay. They, I think they kind of. I think the doctors are the ones that ultimately decide if this is going to happen or not. Yeah, I had a call from actually a Utah father from a sub, uh, Salt Lake suburb fairly recently, and uh, he left the hospital. He and his wife had declined circumcision for their son a number of times, and when he came back to the hospital after going home to shower or, or whatever, uh, found out that the baby had been circumcised without a signed consent. Wow. That hospital actually only had a yes on their uh on their form they didn't even have a no and of course you shouldn't have to have a no the norm should be to leave the child alone so wow. you're right the doctors sell the procedure off and the doctors are the nurses the mothers are often I have unable to, wonder to really how many understand doc- what's doctors going on are jewish that want this done <laughs> Oh, Sorry. i don't know i'm not even going to go there thanks for the call randy uh you know this is uh that is, it is sad. I mean, especially like you're talking about this child on the uh, on the Native American reservation. That is that's tragic. Now I've got I've got Ricky uh, calling f- all the way from uh, from Springville. Are you there, Ricky? Still? No, Ricky lost the patience there. That's the problem. Is that uh, we've only got one line, and <laughs> so people get sick of waiting. It, you're right. It's not risk free. It's not pain free. Uh, and Becky was actually asking a question, and maybe you know this. Uh, she was asking during the break, is this actually a line item that's added to the hospital bill? It depends on what state you're in and how it's billed. But, of course, the, do- the doctor definitely the, you know, get, gets paid. And in most hospitals, depending, you know, this varies tremendously, uh, the hospital stay could be slightly longer, usually if they have to keep the baby until the doctors come around to do the circumcisions. Babies who are circumcised are in a hospital on average a half day longer than babies who are not. Um, in some cases, it's considered a higher level of complexity of service. Make no mistake that it adds enormous cost to our medical system. There's the cost of the circumcision, there's the cost of the physician, there's the cost of the hospital, all the supplies, the nurse's attention that could certainly be on something quite a lot more productive than cutting off part of a baby's genitalia. And then there's the cost of, of repairs because a, a, a lot of babies, and we don't have an exact figure on this, are taken back because either the parents don't like the way the circumcision looks, the baby is not completely, is not healing properly. Um, there are many reasons, and at that point, the child goes back not to the OB or pediatrician who did it, but to a pediatric urologist. It's very expensive, more trauma for the child, all completely unnecessary. And that is why Intact America is calling for doctors to put down the knife. There, there is no downside at all for <clears throat> America to stop circumcising our baby boys. No it, downside. It, only, it really only is, an upside. It really does seem to be a, a battle of education, uh, you know, because it's just waking people up. Now, I do have uh, a caller here, another guy, uh, Max in Sandy. Are you there, Max? Hello. How are you today? Just fine. Hey, we've okay. got, uh, you're, you're on the air with, uh, well, not only do we have Becky McInnes, uh, midwife, but you've got George Ann Chapin from uh, Intact America. What, what did you, do you have something to say or a question? Well, you've covered the emotional part and the practicality, also the, um, in, the expense part of it. You know, mm-hmm. it, even my grandson had a dinosaur, it was two to five hundred dollars, and for a few moments work. It's, it's money to the doctor. They love it. Ching, ching. But. Yeah, there's a there's, perverse incentive there. Right, and I believe it's, it, it's, it's wrong. Just like, uh, circumcising women, you should not mutilate a man's genitalia. Okay, so having said that, there is a reason men have foreskin. It's not a useless organ like your appendix or something. Right. It, it's there for a purpose, and people think, well, it's for masturbation, but it's not. See, um, women are made in a particular way, but prolonged sex causes women to dry out and uh, creates uh, quite a bit of soreness, and it's um, frustrating for the man as well as the woman, and pretty soon they don't enjoy the sex as much as they used to, especially if they're in t- anticipating pain, then they don't want to perform sex anymore. Foreskin takes away all that because your foreskin, actually when a woman starts to dry out, you're passing in and out of your own foreskin. and Okay, not hey, Max, Max look, man, look, 
dude, I, I mean, this is cool, and I want to be medical, but you know what? At the same time, I got people who are going to take offense to getting too much into the details. Can you just come up from the details a little bit and just speak more he's generally? He's right. You know, Jake, I can, he's right. The foreskin has a function. It has a function in sexuality and yes. pleasure. Unfortunately for us, we're a repressed culture. Right. Everything he's saying is true. People should, you know, should learn about it, and uh, we shouldn't be embarrassed to talk about I mean, after all, if we're willing to cut off a boy's sex organ, we ought to be able to talk about it. So so I think it's a great call. I understand where you're coming from from the program, but Max is 100% right about what he's saying about the normal foreskin. The normal body has a foreskin, and it's there for a purpose. Right. Now, the sexual loop part of the whole thing is probably the only way to do sex without foreskin and have it still pleasurable when you get put it this way. People will have much more satisfying sex life if they continue to have the foreskin. And yeah, it'll, I think it'll and leaving it at that level is great. And that's great. Yeah. Hey, anything else you want to say, Max? Of course, keeping it PG for us. Well, that's pretty much it. Because it, because it has a function, it's it's actually necessary for a happy sexual life with your partner. And therefore, it it is just insane for anybody to have the foreskin cut off. A lot of people are trying to figure out how to regrow the foreskin. That's right. Yeah, there's actually I've 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 uh, seen that whole movement. Hey, thanks again for the call, Thank Max. You. I hate to, you know, look. Here's you, you raised the perfect point. Obviously, I'm I'm having these guests and having this discussion, but we do live a place where there's seven words I can't say, and there's even shades of gray that that are uh, questionable. So I do want to. Grab foreskin is not one of the words you can't say. Yeah, yeah, it is. It isn't, <laughs> and and. Uh, you know, uh, it is kind of a taboo, so I want to break people in easy a little bit here. Uh, but what what can we do, Georgia? And obviously, go to Intact America, support this "Put Down the Knife" campaign. Um, I'm assuming you find pretty much most of the midwives are are behind you. I, I would assume. Um, I would say most, but um, not all. This is the confusing part. People talk about choice. And frankly, when I heard Becky start talking, I thought, oh, well, you know, I hope she doesn't get the the issue of, you know, the, the choice of the person whose body it is. And clearly Becky's got this figured out and is, you know, in the right place on it. But people talk about choice. It should be, you know, parents just need to be informed so they can make the right decision. You know what? It's not their decision. It's the decision of the person who has to live with the consequences. So, that is really important. We should not be afraid to step back and say, you know what, this is not my call to make. I'm going to do nothing. As a, as a friend of mine who's a pediatrician says, his favorite expression is, don't just do something. Stand there. Well, what happened <laughs> to the whole Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm? I mean, well, what even happened Well, I, I to think that? that's a really, you know, we, we talk about that a lot in, in, in intactivist circles. I believe many doctors who circumcise babies don't think they're doing harm. I think they've been convinced themselves. They've, they've covered their ears to the sounds of the baby screaming. After all, doctors sometimes do, do have to do painful things to children. Uh, so I don't think they think they're doing harm. But in fact, um, at least 100 babies a year in this country die, mostly from blood loss from circumcision. Um, it is harmful. And it's again, it's not the choice of the doctor or the parent to make. It's the choice of the individual whose foreskin or whose body part is being removed. Yeah, so, I, I, I agree 100%, and I hate to cut you off, but we're actually, we got about 30 seconds till we cut out of here, so I wanted to give people your website again. It's intactamerica.org, right? Correct. Hey, thanks, for, we, thanks for coming so on. Appreciate, so appreciate the chance to be on your show. Becky, you're great, too. Thank you, and thanks to all your listeners. Okay, and uh, check out utahbirthcenter.com. If you want a midwife, it's the way to go. Come on back. Great. K-Talk, Voice of Utah. AM 630, K-Talk. We give you the truth, and you decide. Wake up without yuck in your lungs or the dark cloud of lung cancer or heart disease looming over your future. Have the energy and health you deserve by simply calling Salt Lake City Family Hypnosis at 801-738-5390. Forget what you've seen from TV and the movies. Hypnosis is powerful and natural. 